I've been crucified with Christ I've been crucified with Christ I no longer live but Christ lives in me Welcome to our Bible study, the Apostolic Doctrine of Eschatology. We are continuing to talk about contextual inconsistencies. Things that are being said that have been taken out of context have been taken away from the original meaning of Scripture. Today we're going to be continuing our subject, the Great Tribulation, Part 2. And we find in Daniel chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Daniel said this was to be a period of tribulation that has not ever been seen before nor would ever be seen thereafter. Why? Because the twelve tribes of Israel, the physical people of Israel, they no longer exist. They were destroyed. Their nation ended in the first century in the year A.D. 70. And that that would take place on the last day the Great Tribulation was going to take place in the generation of the last days, and there would be a resurrection. The resurrection followed the Great Tribulation. Jesus said in John chapter 6 four times that the resurrection was going to take place on the last day. He spoke with Martha in John chapter 11, and Martha said, We know that Lazarus shall arise again in the resurrection on the last day. So all of these things are relative. They're time perimeters that tell us when the judgment of God came, when the great tribulation came, and to whom it was going to fall upon. In Matthew chapter 24 and verses 21 and 22, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Now history bears out the fact that there have been a lot of great calamity and tragedies that have occurred through the centuries. But the Great Tribulation was terminology that was specifically designed and used on covenant people the twelve tribes of Israel, the nation of Israel, the city of Jerusalem, and the temple, and the Jewish religion. The judgment of God was to come upon them. In Mark chapter 13, verses 14, 19, and 20. But when you shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let them that readeth understand, then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. For in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he had chosen, he has shortened the days." The abomination that made desolate the city of Jerusalem were the armies of Rome that had besieged the city. They surrounded the city and the, some of the atrocities that took place in this period of time you can read in Deuteronomy 28. Terrible, horrific things occurred to those people that were inside the walls of the city of Jerusalem. In Luke chapter 21, Verse and when you shall see Jerusalem compass with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, 
and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries either enter thereinto. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there should be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. In Luke chapter 21, it is evident, the scripture said, those were to be the days of vengeance when all things that were written would be fulfilled. There is no future coming of a great tribulation. There's no doubt things that are going to happen in our world that are going to be tragic even in the future, but they are not the great tribulation spoken of in the Bible. The great tribulation, the judgment of God, the day of wrath, the day of the Lord's wrath was against covenant breakers, the nation of Israel. They were destroyed in the year A.D. 70 completely. They are never going to be uh, coming back again. It is evident that the tribulation mentioned here is that which was to come upon the people of Jerusalem and Judea. Tribulation, which would result in the destruction of the city and the temple. Jesus spoke of various things that would come to pass first. Wars, famines, pestilence, and earthquakes. But these would not be the sign of impending desolation. The desolation that when they would see Jerusalem compassed with the armies of Rome, then they would know that destruction and desolation was nigh. Matthew said, For then shall be great tribulation. Luke said, There shall be great distress in the land. According to the scriptures, the great tribulation that Jesus spoke about was to bring great affliction, distress, and wrath upon the Jews and destruction upon their city and their temple. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 16, Paul says that wrath was to come upon them to the uttermost. The same wrath that is spoken of in Luke chapter 21, verse 23. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there should be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. The prophecy that Jesus gave continues with these words in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 22 and Mark chapter 13 verse 30. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Verily I say unto you, that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. The one thing that we realize here is that the reference here is to the area upon which the great tribulation in those days was to come, Jerusalem and Judea. This cannot be wrestled from its proper setting. The context is simple. It's very plain. It was against Jerusalem and Judea, not against the world that we live in to today. The destruction that came upon the land and the people was the judgment of God. It was the great tribulation. It had definite boundaries. It could only continue for a limited period of time. Jerusalem would be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles would be fulfilled. So says Luke chapter 21 verse 24. This was Titus and the Roman armies that besieged the city and made desolate Jerusalem, Judea, and destroyed the temple there in A.D. 70. We cannot teach doctrine on suppositions that are false. We cannot read scriptures within the framework of a modern world. The modern concept of the world includes China, Russia, South America, and so on. 
But this is our world today, not the world of 2,000 years ago. Yet so often, biblical authors use the term world within the framework of their time, of their cosmology. Example, Luke chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And in Acts chapter 11 and verse 28. And there stood up one of them named Agabus, and he signified by the Spirit that there should be a great dearth throughout all the world which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. The word world being Ocominion, then known as the world empire of Rome. Very clearly it is seen that these scriptures do not refer to a global world. To do so, we do great disservice to the inspiration of the scriptures. Honoring the context of the original readers is critical to proper biblical interpretation. The Great Tribulation has been has a covenantal meaning. All of its context and framework is about the end of the old covenant relationship that God had with Israel. It was the judgment of God against Judaism which ended forever in the year A.D. 70 of the first century, 2,000 years ago. In highly metaphoric and apocalyptic language, the Lord Himself described the Great Tribulation in terms of cosmic destruction. The sun being darkened, the moon being turned to blood, the stars falling from the sky, as said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 and 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Remember, apocalyptic language is the language that's used in Scripture that speak of foreboding doom. The connection with Matthew chapter 23, verses 13, 28, irrefutably demand a first century application and fulfillment. Remember, Jesus spoke to living, breathing people, and with audience relevance, we understand when he said, woe to you, woe to you, seven times, woe to you. The church people of his day, they were the ones that were at fault with many things, just like it is today. It's church people that God has the hardest time trying to direct and, and to guide. We cannot overlook or ignore the context of Scripture to support any false ideology. The Great Tribulation was concluded with the desolation and destruction of the Jewish nation, the city of Jerusalem, the Jewish temple, and religion in the Roman Jewish War in 66 A.D. to 70 A.D. That was when the Great Tribulation occurred. It is not coming at any future time. There's not going to be a great tribulation. No matter what people on TV and the radio, no matter what the preachers say, no matter what churches teach, when, when you read and study about the great tribulation in the Bible, it is an event that took place. It was the judgment of God against God's covenant people. Futurists believe that the Great Tribulation is yet to come, a soon-to-be period of a seven-year global world in which a satanic peace treaty is signed by the Antichrist. They, the futurists, say it is a 2,000-year postponed gap of Daniel's 70th week. Gaps between verses and passages are asserted by futurists today, but there are no 2,000-year facts 
observable in the Bible. Futurism is like, to me, futurism is like snowball theology. You pick up a stone, you wrap it, you roll it, uh, cook it up in your hand, you roll it around for centuries, you can see it, you can feel it, you can stand on it, but when you examine snowball theology with the light of scriptural truth, it will disappear right in front of your eyes. So the Great Tribulation is biblical. It is an event that took place. It was prophesied to happen in the beginning of God's covenant relationship with the twelve tribes of Israel there at Mount Sinai. Moses reviewed and rehearsed the matter before them. He told them what would happen to them if they broke the covenant. He told them if they would be blessed of God, it would be because they obeyed God's commandments and laws. They did not. So it happened. 1,500 years later, it happened in the first century A.D. In the year 70 A.D., the end of that last day's generation. The last days are gone. There are no last days under the New Covenant. The New Testament, the New Covenant, is everlasting. It is eternal. It does not have an end. So when you read the Bible, remember, you're reading a spiritual book. Jesus said, except a man is born again, he cannot see how to enter into or to enter into the kingdom of God. Why would you give a blind man a book? What's he going to do with it? A lot of church people that go to church today are simply blinded. Tradition has blinded their eyes. There are two kinds of people in the world today. Searchers and shoppers. Searchers are those who seek a relationship with God and want to know the absolute truth of God's Word. Shoppers today, they're in churches everywhere. They are those who seek a life, lifestyle that fits their own. Which are you? If you have any questions, any input, you can email us at the New Covenant Apostolic Church at gmail.com. Thank you. I've been crucified with Christ. I've been crucified with Christ. I know.